Hacken. Home is where the heart is, and yesterday was time for tears and fond farewells at a Melbourne footy ground known as Moravan. After more than a quarter of a century, the Saints went marching in for the last time. They did next year. St Kilda will play at the monolith they call Waverley Park, better known to the cynics as Arctic Park. The club needs the money that flows from being able to cater for bigger crowds. The fans say it will mean less atmosphere and fewer thrills. Amory Sparkman reports on a battle with the barrackers that they cannot win. For those of you who cannot fathom the ferocity and fanaticism of AFL fans, then the St Kilda saga will confuse you even further. On the surface, and it used to be a pretty soggy surface at Moorabbin, all this hype is simply about a football club switching grounds. That is, until you talk to the Saints diehards and understand this is really about a family being thrown out of their home. Long time we've been coming here, you know, great home ground advantage. It's, you know, it's a very sad day for everybody, I think. I'm definitely not happy. Are you happy about moving to no! no! We want to stay here! <laughs> I love it here. I like it here. This is my spot. The Saints went marching in for the last time yesterday at Linton Street, and their fretting supporters saluted them in style. You're dressed for the occasion. Well, it is. It thought it, it did need something. It did need a touch of class or just something different about it. Than just, it's not the average football day today. The reason for the Saints' move to Waverley Park for their home games is economics. Arctic Park, as it's not so affectionately called, holds 90,000. Moorabbin, only 30,000. More bottoms on seats, more dollars to keep the club viable. It makes sense. But while heads understand, Hearts wonder if it will ever be the same again. And it's just, it's the most uplifting experience. It's like, uh, it's like, it's this indestructible force that just can't be stopped. And uh, the, the whole ground just pulsates. It's, it's magic. It's a special place in my heart, I suppose, in the Raven, especially, you know, them last quarters when the game's close and. Uh, all the supporters and that start ranting and raving and cheering and you know it nearly brings the roof down. There's just some sort of feeling that you get when you're at Moorabbin that you don't get when you're at any other ground. And I think to go to VFL Park you're going to lose that special sort of feeling I think. Of course we live in a democracy. There was a vote and there was an action committee to keep St Kilda at Moorabbin. It was led by Bruce Eva they lost. Yesterday, before the ground filled up, a shattered man paid his last respects. It seems crazy that you're in love with a football ground. I mean, a lot of people say, well, you barrack for the team, not the ground, but the uh, home is where the heart is. And uh, have I given up the fight? Oh, I, I suppose so. It'd, it'd take a miracle now. The Saints are moving from Moorabbin, lost the vote, we're off you see, to where the showers down. Waverley. These barrackers are just not happy about moving to a ground built in a rain belt. The facilities may be great, but what about the fraternity? Look at the atmosphere. You can't burn it. And what's wrong with Waverley exactly? It's cold. I have to buy new thermal underwear, don't I? Don't <laughs> we'll save a bunch of dollars. We'll still freeze on Saturday. Arctic Park in winter. Waverly. Even songs have been written about this sad situation. Author of this one, Melbourne radio personality, Fox's Dee Dee. So I wanted to sum up the feelings of the crowd because I think we have to accept that the votes happen. We have to move, but we don't want to because you can't replace the atmosphere that we've got here. Would you like me to sing for you? Yeah. <laughs> Of course, when St Kilda moved to Moorabbin back in 1965, it had the reputation of being a bog, a bog that happened to bring them plenty of luck. This ground was lovely when we moved from the junction over to here, but now we have to move on and hopefully history will repeat itself and we win another premiership like we did last time we moved. 28 and a half gone. There's Murray's kick to the wing position on the outer side.
Of course, that magnificent grand final victory in 1966 was the Saints' finest hour. They won an only flag. A healthy in time for a young man in the cheer squad called Molly Meldrum. When I first saw this page, I thought, oh, we made that run through. And then I looked, there he is. There he is. There he is. Oh, boater. <laughs> Go with a bit of class for the game. But there was little class about the Saints in the 70s and the 80s. They were so unsuccessful, the club was accused of turning on the sprinklers on a Friday, so opposition players would sink down in the mud on Saturday. All the players turned up to the ground to see the ground about three inches underwater, and we couldn't work out why, but uh, apparently a few of the boys decided that uh, we were a good wet weather side, and that's how St Kilda got its famous uh, putting the sprinklers on on Friday nights. Yes, it was uh, a bit fun to turn up to see the ground in that condition. <laughs> But the horror patch and a debt crisis are now behind the Saints. In 92, they're a power unit in the league. Many believe their game has outgrown Linton Street. Try telling the crowd that. Unfortunately, money takes over and money speaks. And I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> it was not the Saints' finest performance yesterday, but they beat Fitzroy to ensure it was the right ending. The infamous animal enclosure between the St Kilda players' race and the umpires' race were in full voice. Led by this sweet grey-haired lady. We've been telling the guards to watch the umpires, don't watch the public, just watch the umpires. They're the ones who are in trouble. But when the players walked off in victory, the floodgates of feeling opened. grand final had been won. By now tired and emotional and just a tad inebriated, thousands of supporters refused to leave the turf. From now on, the Saints will be marching out to Waverley Park. And of course, however much they hate it, those stalwart fans will be marching right behind them. Our yeah, supporters say they won't come, but they, they don't barrack for the ground. They barrack for the red, white and black. They'll be there. That's Victorians, they something else. St Kilda farewelling, farewelling the old ground in great style yesterday with a victory over Fitzroy 101 to 84.